the air conditioner comes back out comes back on the air conditioner comes back on um, but it might not uh, so yeah uh, today um, you're watching this the day after because this will be posting on Monday if I get it done on time uh, but today which would be Sunday I actually got a chance to go to the Hartford Comic Con um, my local comic store had a bunch of had a couple of free passes left over and you know, I'm you know, I do pretty well with those guys so I've you know, I've been a customer of theirs for a long time they've done very well by me and they've actually been a bit of help uh, to the site as well I've gotten a few interviews like the Billy Tucci interview the uh, Cesar Feliciano interview uh, everything of Brass City Comic Conventions because of them because they run but they uh, or co-sponsor for, for the for the event. Uh, so they had an extra pass, so I didn't had no plans of uh, of even going. So when I had any opportunity, I, I took it. I really wanted to see this event, and this is right now. I'm not. Let me just say this right now and remember this. No matter what complaints I make, this was not a bad convention. It was. It was actually it was an okay convention. A lot of the problems I had with it were just me, and I think I've kind of been spoiled a bit uh, by by going to Kineticon even before I started getting uh, press pass. Um, I didn't actually hear about Hartford Comic Con until um, maybe a week or two before, so I didn't. It was too late to register for a pa press pass, and I went known to be able to how to contact all the celebrities that were going to be there to be able to interview them. So I thought I was going to still have the opportunity to, um, you know, talk with the, uh, right, my usual bet with the, with the independent, uh, creators that go, that, uh, table there. There were so, there were so many there. I, with what time I had and how busy it was, how busy a lot of them were, like, no. Maybe if I had uh, two days, I'd split the room up and do like half one day and the other half the other day. But under the circumstances, like I'm not gonna get all these people. I'm, I'm not even gonna even try, man. I'm not even gonna try. So I think that killed part of the experience for me. One thing I've, I've, I've figured out is one of the things that I really like about going to these conventions is who I get to talk to. Um, you know, and recording the panels, you know, the interviews and the panels. I think that's really what uh, I get drawn to with this. The uh, with Kineticon, it's a little bit more because I enjoy watching just all the people, all the costumes, and all stuff. And there were costumes, but I've noticed that. The comic conventions, the, the pure comic conventions, don't have nearly as many costumes, especially the, um, you may get some people dressed up as superheroes, and there were some, there were some really cool costumes. There was a plastic man that I was afraid to take pictures of, because, let's just say you could see uh, a bit extra plastic. I'll just leave that there. <laughs> um, but, uh, that was a really cool costume, it was a... This is an ending note to myself. This should be coming up on the screen right about now. You should be seeing right now a da a Dalek costume. Uh, there's actually a kid in there. I've got some footage of him uh, coming out of it. It's actually like a three-piece uh, alpha piece uh, costume. But it looks it looked really good. It I mean it's it doesn't, I mean, it looked homemade, but otherwise it looked spot on to uh, the current New Who uh, Dalek models. And, um, let's see, I sh there should be some audio at some point where you can actually get to hear him talk. <laughs> Right. 
they actually got the actually got some kind of filter in there, so he actually say exterminate. He actually told the, the guy in a, in a Hawkman, really good Hawkman costume, uh, to move his wings like a doll. Like, move your wings. Kid, <laughs> kid's a natural. That should kind of scare you a little bit, but um, oh, it was it was really it was like the, that's like the best costume I saw the the whole convention. Um, first thing I want to build a chair in there so now I'm just standing around walking. I don't know how how they, the other costumes do it. Um, but it was made to scale. Maybe he wouldn't be able to sit down. Made to scale, but uh, you know. But there are some, are some really good costumes and. After this video post, there should be a, if you're watching this on my site, there should be a gallery with uh, the other photos. I'll see if I can put it on the Reviewers Unknown posting. But it should definitely be on the, uh, on the at the BW posting of this. Uh, some really good pictures. Uh, there was a Mary Marvel who was in Captain Marvel's colors, but still, it's, it, at least she's not being ignored like the new 52 has been doing. So it was nice to see, see that. Um... There was a bar from uh, from Spaceballs. That was a good. That was actually a pretty good one they put on there. Um, the no, the bars are from very good stuff. Uh, but there wasn't that many. Kineticon seemed to be just crazy with with costume with costumes. You walk over a place, you can't really go anywhere without seeing at least one person in, a, in a co some kind of costume. But at the comic conventions. You may find a few here. You may you'll find some, but there, but um, per capita, there's definitely not as many uh, at that convention as there are at uh, at Kineticon. Like I said, it's it's kind of spoiled me because that's been over. That's been going on over ten years. I've been going since 2009. I started covering it uh, officially. Is it? Started covering it uh, officially in 2010 and 2012 under the media pass. So I got to do even more um, stuff from that. But, um, so, it's, I don't know, Kinetikon is still, to me, is, is the best convention in there, but, like, the Harper convention was, for Comic Con, was, was good, okay, it was good enough, for them. if you were there to, to buy stuff, I think that it was, it was really good. They had some panels, um, I actually got sat down for a few minutes at the, uh, uh, My Little Pony, uh, creators panel, they had, Two people who worked on the uh, artists who work on the My Little Pony comics for IDW, and they were talking about um, IDW's comics and uh, mentioned a bit about the Cartoon Network uh, comics and how they're willing to take a little more risks at IDW than the DC stuff was. Um, yeah, the DC stuff, I stuff, Pop Off Girls and comics. The, Every time they do a kids comic, they don't take any. They don't even take the chances that the show takes. That's the part that gets me. Um, no, there's just a little too kiddie. I don't think they really understand the the, the shows that they that they ad, uh, adapt, even when it's based on one of their properties. If anything, their stuff tends to move more towards how the DC universe is working. Only it's more uh, kid friendly. But so, if you're going there to buy stuff, or maybe see some of the some of the uh, celebrities they had, uh, people from Arrow, people from Spartacus, because we all know what a great comic book Spartacus was. Uh, um, you know, Spartacus, the the show on Showtime, I think. I don't know. I don't watch that. I don't watch it, so I don't know. I don't watch Arrow either, but. They actually, I think they had a voice actor who played Rasha Ghoul. I heard over the announcement. That's one thing that they did really well that the other conventions don't really do, haven't done. Uh, the announcements, that you can hear them on the convention, tell you when somebody's going to be at the um, a celebrity autograph uh, area, which was a good idea that they had that, I think. So you could go and meet your <coughs> favorite celebrities for, who were there for like an hour or something. I don't know. Um... And I like the fact that they had the announcements so you could so you could hear them real well. Uh, and 
I started talking about the announcements and I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Okay, no, but they had the they had the announcer saying um, when people were going to be were going to be uh, in what area when certain panels were starting, and so that was nice that they had that. Uh, see, I'm trying to I want to get all the good things out of the way so you know I actually did like the like the convention. I like the how many different. They, if they had any of the big names, the only close thing I saw was I saw Dan uh, Kana there. I didn't get to talk to anybody really except. Um, uh, my friend there, Luke Foster, who does uh, Center Somewhere, and used to do Moon, Moon Freight 3, uh, and he did Drawn Away. Um, I mentioned Drawn Away on the site a few times in articles. Um, and you've seen Foster in a couple of the video convention videos. So, I kind of want to look for him. him. Anyway, there was have to find. This is my, here comes my first problem I have with this place, was mentioned was the map. It really didn't tell you where the artists were supposed to be, where the panels were supposed to be, where the were supposed to be. You were just supposed to kind of guess from the numbers and from memory of seeing the site. You couldn't it didn't really show you where anything was. That's something they need to fix in the future. Um, but I finally did find Luke Foster. Um, some one of the tablers said hi to me and like I said hi back was kind of distracted trying to find Luke's so he was I had no idea where he was. And uh, somebody else gave me a sticker, gave me a sticker, and I kind of gave him the brush off because I was like really tr lost and trying to. F yeah, and if by any chance whoever did that uh, sees this video, I am very sorry for uh, brushing off like that. I didn't. You know, I was trying to find him, and I never got a chance to get back to your table and apologize in person. So if you see this video. I am sorry that I just kind of uh, thing just said uh, uh, thanks and, and walked off. That I'm not usually the, that uh, much of a jerk, but um, so if you see us, I am sorry. But I did get to uh, did finally find them. They need to really uh, adjust that map for next year so we can know which seconds which. When another guy's trying to find the costume area. And apparently he thought the guy sent them there, sent them into that area, but it was actually in a different hall, in the opposite hall. So I don't know if he heard it wrong or if the guy gave him the wrong instructions. That's I see. There was only one staff problem I had when I came in. Uh, hang on, a minute, I gotta. I gotta get the ride. Uh, no, prank stupid. I'm thinking about that as well. I'm not any of this. Um, when I got it, well, first of all, let me explain what happened trying to get there because I kind of came into the convention and mm, not the best moods. So maybe this affects um, the negative, the way I look at some of the negatives. But when I uh, when I first entered, first tried to get into the convention, I was, it was a pain trying to find a place to park. M many things worse than that. There was some parade, uh, I think it was some cultural parade, because, um, uh, but trying to find a place to park was, uh, just a royal pain in the neck. I finally found a place, to, found a parking lot, and, um, uh, then I had to walk around trying to find the way the door to the convention center, uh, the XL Center rather. I just don't, just don't get confused. It's the XL Center. It used to be the Hartford Civic Center. Um, but I did finally get in there. Uh, I saw. The, well, let me show you these 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 video clips here. Um, when you walked in the door, I didn't actually film this later, but when you walked in the door, at least the door I came in. You had um, replicas, better replicas than we saw at uh, uh, Comic Con. There was the Batmobile. There was you're probably looking at the Bat Cycle first, um, but there was the Bat Cycle. Uh, there was the Batmobile classic, both from the '60s show. And I didn't get a good shot of it here, but uh, I did see on the news that they act. It's actually signed by. Uh, 
The Batmobile is actually signed by uh, Adam West, Burt Ward, and Julie Newmar. And he's been trying to get a lot of the other uh, Batman characters. Frank Gorton sadly passed away, and so did uh, Cesar Romero and Burgess Meredith, so he's probably not going to get those. But uh, <clears throat> In fact, he got those three on there. It's still pretty, pretty good. And uh, you probably also saw Julie Newmar uh, sign the Bat Cycle. One thing I want to know about these conventions, you always get the Batman cycle with the Robin sidecar. I want to see the Batgirl cycle. I want to see someone bring in the Bat. That's the most famous motorcycle, and that's actually from the show in the comics, it, from the uh, from the comics and from uh, the New Adventures uh, filmation show. So they need to bring the Batgirl cycle in some way. Uh, but still, um, Julie Newmar also signed the, the Bat cycle. That wasn't mentioned in the news story that I saw. So I don't know if anybody else uh, signed the cycle. I know she. I know those three signed the Batmobile, which, of, uh, if you looked inside the Batmobile, that was at uh, Comic Con last year. There wasn't. Uh, it just looked like the the inside of a regular car. They 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 put in the Bat turn switch, and that was it. This car, from what I saw in the news, because I couldn't get close enough, actually has all the buttons. The, they even got the mobile computer in the trunk. Um, it, it actually looks spot on to the Batmobile. He said in the news clip that uh, it was just in somebody's garage and so he bought it and he's um, actually let a couple, married cu couple get married in it and uh, he's going to let his kids take it to prom which when it's fine, which would be fine which is the car itself, but these actually have Famous people's signatures. I wouldn't risk it myself <clears throat> with the cop with the signatures on there. I mean, bad enough if they got totaled. <clears throat> That's how you feel if you got had a Batmobile, a replica Batmobile with the actual name characters on there, and it gets hit by some drunk driver. Yeah, even if everybody survived, you'd kind of feel bad for losing that car. But his car, he can do what he wants with it. <coughs> um, but it's a, it was a, it were beautiful replicas. Uh, and then he had the, the Bat Pod from, uh, Dark from the Dark Knight. Yeah, I guess it looked okay. I, I'm not a fan of that Batmobile from Dark Knight. It just. Let me put it this way: the Joel Schumacher Batmobile looks more like a Batmobile than the Tumbler does. I'm gonna just, just call it what it is. And I don't even like the Schumacher Batmobile. So like every complaint everybody makes about the Schumacher movies, my biggest complaint is the Batmobile is ugly. But at least it's a Batmobile, not some street tank. It's not even. I don't even think things street legal. Most of the Batmobiles haven't been street legal. Let's be honest. But um, they also had uh, in a different area. They had the Black Beauty from uh, the movie version of Green Hornet, the recent movie. Um, I don't know if it's uh, one of the cars from the actual uh, from the movie or not, but it it has looks it's definitely ha put in uh, action mode. It's got the the guns popped up. It's got guns on the door. It's got the missile launchers and the uh, where the where the fog lights are. It, I didn't get to see inside, so I don't know. I never saw the movie either, so I wouldn't you know. Couldn't tell you how. What looks right, but it looks pretty look pretty cool. I'll, I'll say that. But I, I kind of like the one from the from the TV show better. With the excuse me, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, those are those are pretty cool. And then uh, the Connecticut Ghostbusters were there again. You may remember I interviewed them in the uh, what was it 2010? I think it was a 2010 videos. Uh, I'd interviewed, I spoke about with the with the Connecticut Ghostbusters, but this time they actually had Ecto One playing a Ghostbuster theme, and it was <laughs> a really, really, really a nice job on that. Um, so let's see. I want to get all the positives out of the way. 
But anyway, I had filmed that. I filmed that. Went back and filmed that afterwards. But when I first came in, I saw those. Those looked really cool. Then I went to go um, turn the past in so I can get my my badge. Like my, I got one of those paper wrist things, so I could walk around and and do stuff. And this is this was my first complaint, and maybe they have a good reason for doing it. I um, you know, he wasn't mean about the. Let me say this right now: the guy was not mean about it. He was just doing his job. I don't have a problem with him. I'm not reporting him. I'm not complaining about him. It's the policy that's that annoys me. Um, when I got in, he, I was holding the my uh, my big thermos uh, of water, and I get. I'm not trying to shield for anybody. I'm just bringing something to make I pick up the Propel water. Um, I had berry flavor because my, that's my favorite flavor from uh, from there. Because I don't believe in buying regular water. It's like, why am I going to spend that much kind of money for purified tap water? And it gets worse when you when you hear this. Um, I don't know whether and he told me, you know, he said, "What what is it? Well, it's it's berry flavored water." And it's like. Well, you can't bring it in here. No outside beverages. You're gonna have to dump it and and get the right water from here. It's like the pro water where I buy it costs ninety nine cents. He wants me to dump ninety nine cent flavored water with uh, vitamin enrichment, which is what I need for walk, walk and run a convention all day. He wants me to dump that and buy four dollar four dollar purified tap water like oh no no I, I I just drank the whole thing I don't even think you saw it I probably could have just gone on my way and I'm gonna but I'm and I've been bothered by whether I'm an honest guy so I actually took and I just drank the whole thing I'm not gonna dump it out forget that so I just drank it all let the nutrients in surprisingly I didn't pee as much as I thought I would have to but um and then I just use the water bubble as the rest of the convention. I'm not gonna pay four dollars for purified tap water. I mean, I understand concession stands things cost a little bit more. I I pay like four bucks for a pretzel, for one of the big super pretzels. And I got just as they were just as they came out of the oven and they were putting it on the rack, so it was good. I love those things, but. Um, not as good as if you get a pretzel time or a pretzel maker now. Uh, every time I go to the mall, I get I go to pretzel maker. I enjoy, but um, I get the pretzel bites. Um, I think I'm a lot. It's a way to get my thoughts in, I guess. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dump my water that I water that has what I need in it and it's flavored for four dollars purified tap water. It's, not gonna, that's not gonna happen. So I drank the whole thing, and that's. I can see it for certain beverages. I can see it for food. When it comes to water, you do not want people dehydrating because they can't pay for your four buck water, or they don't want to pay four bucks for water. You know, if they can't get to the bubblers, there was like maybe two bubblers, two or three bubblers that I saw. You know, but. But he wasn't mean about it. He was just doing his job. He wasn't nasty. He didn't get on my throat. He just checked my bag, which I've never seen done in the other conventions. They don't usually check my bag. They just they trust me enough. But they check actually check my bag, make sure that I wasn't carrying in there. And then there we saw him, uh, Marsh White Box. Oh, you were, oh, you're an artist. Like, well, I dabble. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and talk about. Yeah, I do a cartoon on the internet. No, hardly any comic strip on the internet. Hardly anybody reads. Um, But you know, no, he was he was nice about it, but I just, it's the policy that, like with water, especially if I got water with the vitamins in it, from because I dehydrate really quickly and I got trouble with, with nutrient absorption, just, just part of the the whole Chrome's thing. But you know, he at least he was nice about it. Um, but there really wasn't a whole lot for me to do. I I think I've. I think I've been spoiled by CanadaCon being my first convention, because all the stuff going on is like a, it's like a, like I said before, CanadaCon isn't a convention, it's a party. 
it's like a part it's like a party everybody you know da- talking there's there's singing and dancing and uh you got the panels and you got the masquerade and you got all these cool things and the comic companies don't have that they're mostly just people walking around you get to see some really cool costumes uh maybe you get maybe there are some panels but you know, unless you're there to buy stuff, it's not as exciting. And, you know, I'm currently unemployed and broke and running low on funds. Would it be odd, would it be wrong of me if I chose this point to suddenly uh, post a link to my Patreon right, like, right down here? <sighs> yeah, probably would. Okay, get rid of that. <laughs> Yes, um, but um, yeah, it, it's not that it was a bad convention. Just I think I go to a convention for something different. I mean, Kineticon, be my first convention. Yeah, you, uh, you're gonna buy stuff, but you also go for all these other things that go on, and they just don't seem to go on at, at the convention. So if I'm there just for the heck of it, I'm not gonna stay more than a while. So if I hadn't gone free, I probably would have felt like I wasted my money because it's just not for me for well other people really enjoyed it it's not like I say in transit it's not a bad convention it's just you know if I was going there to interview people to do the uh art selling interviews like I do and um, getting to talk to some and if I'd had enough warning I could have contacted some of these celebrities that were there and you know did interviews with them then maybe it would have been worth going, but just based on what the film uh, sense was, it it really wasn't uh, worth it for me. So, just for me personally, I probably won't go back for a while just to see what the convention becomes. Maybe it'll become a better. Maybe I'll go back uh, in a couple of years or something and see what happens. I don't think, unless there's somebody there I really want to see, I don't think. Um, I'm gonna make it next year, but that's me personally. I, you know, it was a it was a good convention. There was a lot of stuff to you if you were um, a fan of Spartacus or uh, Arrow or uh, what are shows? Were, there were some other shows present, or you know, you probably would have gotten something out of it. Like I said, it wasn't it was a good convention? Was well. It was well done for, you know, a first-time convention. But it's just... For me to travel all the way out there, there wasn't enough for me to really consider this a worthwhile trip. I Part of me kind of feel like I should have stayed home and gotten more stuff done than I needed to and save the time and money because I pay for gas. And something weird happened there, too. Um, I went to use my cell phone to call my parents and let them know that I got up there because they get worried when I'm going to new places and I stayed uh, 2012 I stayed at the Homewood Suites uh, which was near the XL Center um, but otherwise I haven't been to the XL Center they wanted me to call and make sure I got there safe and when I called, tried to call from inside the convention the phone didn't work it said emergency numbers only this, this plane came up and I thought it meant because then my hours my uh, go phone hours had uh, been used up, which I didn't think it had been happening. The expiration wasn't supposed to be till the end of June. Uh, so when I got, so I had to stop and I picked up a card on the way home. But then I tried the phone at home, and it worked. So I don't know what happened. Uh, Dad thinks they probably had some kind of signal block there. But so that's kind of annoying. So I just wasted money on that. I could have waited until the end of the month. <sighs> Fudge. But, and then when I tried to get out of the parking, um, I think the parade was, I don't know if the parade was over or not, but they still had part of the road blocked off. Maybe they're still having some kind of celebration. And they got away out there, and there's, they actually parked a car, like, from the top. There's my car, from the top. And here's another car, like, right here. Why would you do that? So I went to the attendant and said, yeah, um, try to be as nice as I could, but I was obviously not happy. Like, 
hey, I'm finding. Can I get my car out of here? You, do you have the car blocking the way here? I want to, want to leave. And you know they were nice, nice to say, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, and they called the other guy over, and they moved the car out of the way. But you know, why would you park the car? Why did he have the keys to the to the car? That's that's something else I should wonder. But um, they parked the car there, and I wish they hadn't. That's kind of annoying. Uh, but. They moved it and they told me how to get back to 84 because uh, the GPS didn't want to turn back on for some reason. I don't know if I left the power on or what. Uh, so yeah, so I couldn't use the phone, I couldn't use the GPS to get home. I got stuck by it behind a slow pickup truck as I uh, was on the way up there, so that oh, it kind of made me a bit unhappy. I had left a little later than I wanted to. So it was just... The convention itself was okay, but not really worth all the crap I went through getting to the convention and leaving the convention. And... I said, it is a pretty good convention. I, if you're considering going next year, I would say go check it out for yourself and you might enjoy it. Me, personally, it just didn't quite work out uh, the way I would have hoped but um, like I say it's not a bad convention uh, feel free to check it out you might enjoy yourself for me it just didn't work out I don't think I'm gonna go again for a while uh, yeah so that's so in lieu of having a whole ton of convention videos you just get this with uh, all the video and then down below will be all the all the uh, the gallery of all the images I took which wasn't that many uh, just because I didn't get a chance to really take as many pictures as I would have liked a lot of it was video so I've hopefully talked long enough to get all that footage uh, into here or at least enough of it to be interesting and now it's back to trying to get, see how much the Kineticon 2013 Press junkets and panels and the comic, the Comic Con interviews and uh, that I can get edited before the convention starts. Not gonna be too, not gonna be too many. I'm not gonna get caught up in time, especially if I gotta go start looking for a job now, because the Patreon is zero as I as I make this video. Zero, no, no support on Patreon at all. So. A uh, bit disheartening, so I've got to find some way to make money. I guess find some. I'm hoping maybe I'm still on. Yeah, uh, still I'm giving up on doing some kind of freelance writing or something, but just to at least even if just slow the bleed would be nice. But I still have to find a way to make some kind of living. So that's going to put me in a down mood, too. So I don't know how much of just the mood I've been in lately and the pain that I went through getting up there and getting back uh, has affected, affected my opinion but like I said go next year see yourself there are people who, enjoy, who enjoyed it there are things to see there are costumes there are plenty of places to buy comics and merchandise and to and definitely check out the the self-publishers, the indie publishers, the web comics. Give those people a look. Check them out. I didn't have time to, to talk to them this year, but uh, you see them next year, go see them, talk to them. You may find uh, a book that you didn't think you'd be interested in is uh, is there, and you may find some, something new outside of your usual, usual interest zone, comfort zone, that you might like, you might actually like. So that was good that they had so many choices there for that. Um, but next year they really need to fix that map. If anybody from Harvard Comic Con is watching me, fix the map. Make it easier so that we know where the panel rooms are, where Artist Alley is, where the photograph area is, where the cosplay section is, is where the cars are. Make sure you get the map done better next year. That's my only complaint with the convention. Fix 
the vat. Let us bring in our water, darn it. <laughs> 